Hello, and welcome to the NYU, NYU Game Center, NYU Game Center Live at IndieCade. We are here at the library, and we're going to show you around. Uh, I'm Gwena Forgem Thrift. I'm one of the staff members here at the NYU Game Center. Uh, and I'm Tony, also a staff and former IndieCade uh, East chair. Uh, we were going to give you a tour today, but uh, that was a little technically difficult, so we decided to hang out here in our coolest room, which is the NYU Game Center Library. Uh, Tony, you want to intro the program? Yeah, sure. So we are the NYU Game Center. We offer two academic programs, a two-year MFA program and a four-year BFA program. Both are game design focused. And we also have an incubator program that is for open, it's open to the public. Um, so applications for that usually open up in the spring. Yeah, and we've been participating in IndieCade for many years now. So we, this is what, our like 10th or, yeah, 100th year at IndieCade. Uh, usually we have a booth um, at, where you can, at IndieCade where you can come play some of our students' games. But this year uh, we're here in New York, so we're going to try to bring the booth here by talking to some of our students and faculty, uh, giving you some information about the program. And if you're interested in playing more from what the NYU Game Center has to offer, has made, uh, there's some NYU Game Center games located on our Indicade page. So if you go to Indicade, I think we're under sponsors, you can scroll down, click on our logo, and you'll find a bunch of uh, really fantastic incubator and student games. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Should we bring on the first team? Yeah, let's do it. So yeah, we're going uh, to chat with some, some students from the program. So let's bring on our first team. These are students in our BFA program. Welcome, welcome. How's it going? Good, good. All right, cool. So first off, uh, we just have a couple of questions we're going to ask you about what you're currently working on and classes in the program. So uh, can you all introduce yourselves and tell you what year you are in the program? Yeah. And you're going to have to talk directly into the microphone, so you can just pass it down. Uh, and if you want to say anything, uh, just like call for the mic. Otherwise, the stream may not hear you. Okay. Cool. My name is Jordan Grayson. I'm a senior undergraduate student. I'm Abby. I'm also a senior undergrad. All right. Hello. My name is Luke, and I am also a senior undergrad. Nice. Cool. So uh, you all are working on a project together right now? Cool. So can you tell us more about the project you're working on, like what class it's for, and, and describe it a little bit? Yeah. So uh, this is for our capstone class, and our game's called Genome. So pretty much, Genome is a game where you are a aristocrat in a zeppelin spraying chemicals onto the people in the city below you that you're responsible for to mutate them. There's an oncoming environmental disaster called the whale return. You have to make them mutate anti-whale things so that they sort of like reproduce the mutations and survive on. Yeah, and um, this is basically a, a multiplayer god game that we've decided to take into a more kind of personal first person experience where y'all are going to be interacting with the space to enact these decisions um, onto the people. Oh, that sounds really cool. I, have, I haven't heard about this yet. This sounds really interesting, very like topical. Yeah, um, where are you at in, in production with the game? Can you tell us about yeah how it's going in, in Capstone, the class? Definitely. Yeah, so we just actually presented our midterm progress for this semester. And so we have uh, our initial kind of playtest build where you can get in with three other aristocrats online and vote on some uh, gene decisions. And we're continually to, continuing to build out that system. Um, is there a way, are you planning on putting it online or where, where can people maybe go to learn about this in the future? I know it's like still super early in development here. Yeah, so I think, um, oh, do you want to talk about it? Yeah, yeah, honestly, probably the best place to go to is like any of our Twitters right now. There's for the original prototype, I think is the itch page that I made on my itch.io, uh, which is kirijo, K-I-R-I-J zero dot itch.io. Uh, which you can find the initial one. We don't have a Steam page or an itch page for the uh, fully fleshed one yet. The initial was made in Pico 8, so it's sort of terrible. Just a warning. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, uh, or you can go to my Twitter or Jordan's Twitter, and you don't I, use I social don't media. <laughs> yeah. I'm a little off the grid. Yeah, and we'll then just have like a Steam page. Keep, we, keep yeah. an eye out for more updates. Because we used Steamworks for the multiplayer, so it's going to end up on Steam. Mm -hmm. So that's a goal and imperative, but... Very cool. Um, and just what was the inspiration? How, wh how did you guys come together on this this uh, yeah concept? Uh, 
<laughs> well, I, I mean, so Abby made this original prototype uh, last spring, and I thought it was really cool. We talked about working on this, and we brought Luke on. Do you want to talk about like the multiplayer? Yeah, sure. So, um, and then I was talking with Jordan too about like working together for Capstone, and I really wanted to work on something that was like multiplayer that had like a cooperative aspect to it, and then that's how we got to this system of you're all together on this ship and voting together on these decisions. The original thing and sort of the conceit of the game, though, is based off of uh, this short story, or not short story, it's a book by Kurt Vonnegut called Galapagos, um, where it's sort of about like humanity being like evolving when they only live in the Galapagos Islands. And then um, also by uh, the, the anthropology article, uh, Flammable, I forget who the exact art, uh, author is, but it's sort of a description and a recording of the... Uh, experiences of citizens in Argentina uh, and their relationship to the surrounding gas companies that are get sick because of it. So that's it. Yeah, that's yeah, that's really really cool. That's so interesting to hear. Yeah, people people like make all kinds of like cool stuff, and it's so interesting to hear about where like people draw these ideas from. Um, all right, I'm gonna ask a couple questions about your overall experience here at the game center. So, what was your what's been your favorite game center class? Um, my favorite Game Center class, probably Math for Game Designers by Alexander King. Very good class. Uh, really, really useful. Uh, I've loved, like, Shader Lab this semester, and I also love Pixel Prototype. Uh, also, 3D modeling is a spectacular class, but it's sort of, like, neutral material, but it's a great class. <laughs> Thank you. I'll, I'll probably have to say math for gaming designers as well. I, I took the same class with Jordan. Um, it's just really cool to be able to use math and apply it to all this um, kind of art in our games. Uh, yeah, I would have never, never expected that would be the answer. That's like really great. Um, what would you guess is the most popular class at the NYU Game Center? Maybe Shader Lab. I feel like shaders are an interesting thing. It was also a good class, uh, pretty popular. Yeah. I have no idea. Games, one all the required yeah. ones. <laughs> I think everyone takes different ones, yeah. so I have no idea. Uh, I'd probably have to say maybe like Major Studio Spring, because I think a lot of people come here and they're really excited to work with um, their peers on like group projects. Yeah. Cool. Cool. yeah, I might guess that Math for Game Designers is the most popular class. Two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, great. Um, all right, well, we have uh, uh, a game we're going to play. Yeah. If we want to get into it, uh, we're going to play a round of this or that. So for uh, this, we're, we got a couple of different comparisons, and you all will tell us which you prefer. They're all, and they're all game related. Okay. Cool. All right, the first one. AAA or indie? Indie. Indie. I'll have to say AAA. Uh. <laughs> Paper prototype or digital prototype? Digital prototype. Digital prototype. Digital. <laughs> playing cards or dice? Playing cards. Uh, dice. I like dice. <laughs> Nintendo Switch or PS5? Nintendo Switch. If it was like PS4, I would have done that, but it's <laughs> Switch. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm still trying to get my hands on a PS5, but right now, Nintendo Switch. Playing games or making games? I have to go with making games. Definitely making. I'd say making games. <laughs> it, 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 it was like a half-half. Group project or solo project? I have to go with group project. I think it depends on the project. I don't know. I like them both a lot. Uh, I'd say group project, depending on who I'm working with. <laughs> All right, intro to game design or Games 101? Intro to game design. Games 101. I'm like a huge history nerd. Uh, games 101. New York City or LA? I'm from California, but I have to say New York City. <laughs> Good answer. New York City. Uh, same as Jordan, I, from California, but New York City. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Detective Pikachu or Chris Pratt as Mario? Detective Pikachu. Chris Pratt. 
Chris Pratt as Mario. <laughs> Chris Pratt as Mario. <laughs> wow. Chris Pratt as Mario might be the math for game designers of movies. Esports or real sports? Esports. Real sports. Uh, esports. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one has a correct answer. It's real sports. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I'm just, jo- just joking. Um, cool. Well, thanks. Do, do you all have any, any closing thoughts you'd like to share with the stream or anything? Wait, for this, so for the Chris Pratt Detective Pikachu one, are we saying, are we saying which one's, I don't understand. Do we like the thing? Yeah, which one you prefer? Okay, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. No, thanks so much for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Yeah. And and good luck with the rest of your capstone. Thank you. All right. Keep an eye yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. we'll we'll drop your your itch in the in the chat. Great. Cool. All right. Next, we're gonna bring on a group of folks that actually work right here in this room, the NYU Game Center Open Library. Come on in. Uh, all right, similarly, I'm going to have you all go around and introduce yourself. So say your name and the year you are in the program. Right. Uh, good afternoon, uh, well, at least according to uh, Eastern Standard. My name is Yuris, and I'm a senior at the NYU Game Center. Hi, my name is Monroe, and I'm a junior. Uh, I'm Santiago, and I'm a senior. Cool. And do you all want to tell us a little bit more about the room that we're standing in here? Yeah, of course. So... Uh, the NYU Game Center Library is kind of like the, you know, the the centerpiece of this entire ordeal. We've got so many games, digital, otherwise, uh, and anyone can come in, play some games, either for research or you know, just to just to play some games, and it's just always a good time. Any, any, any thoughts? Yeah, we have console games, board games, handheld games, VR, everything you could imagine. We also host events for the community, um, all of NYU, so that's really fun to do and like get to connect with others through games. Oh yeah, I think you all nailed it. That that, that sums it up. Um, cool. I have a couple questions about the library here. So, what would you say is the most popular game played here in the library? Right, so uh, I would say that any of the Smash games are the most popular, so much so that we had to ban them and only let them be played on Fridays. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I'd say like any fighting game, really. I mean, in my shifts, nobody comes in for fighting games. So currently it's God of War. There's somebody that's going through all of them. So that's that's been popular. <laughs> Great. Um, all right. I want you all to guess how many board games do you think we have here behind us? What's the total number of board games we have? Uh, excluding, uh, is this excluding uh, duplicates? No, no, including. Including duplicates. Yeah. Ah, then I'm going to have to guess sub 400. This is board games and card games? Board games and card games. Like 650. <laughs> like 510, I'd say. <laughs> Specific. All right, we have 739 board games. <laughs> yeah. All right, how many console games do you think we have? So this is any disc that any disc we have for the consoles. All right, any disc for the consoles. Well, we have a cart full of like all of the disc games we have, and I'm just gonna ballpark it. I'm gonna say 800. At least a thousand. Yeah, no, like 700 at least. <laughs> All right, we have 1,384 console games. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so we have 1,384 console games, and mostly people come in and play Smash. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, what is the trickiest game to set up in the library? Right. Without a shadow of a doubt, I'm going to say that the hardest game to set up is Rock Band. Every single time it trips me up. Every single time. Yeah, I'd also say Rock Band. And we have like this like Logitech steering wheel with like, I don't know, feedback that is impossible to set up. Uh, definitely Rock Band because it matters which set you pick up, either the Xbox or the PlayStation one, and they connect differently for some reason. So that's not fun. <laughs> 
that's why it's always like a different like adventure every time. Yeah, <laughs> no, definitely picked up the wrong one. So this is yeah, this is an advertisement for games you should come in and absolutely ask for. <laughs> uh, so we can get better at setting these things up. <laughs> uh, what's the most unique game you've ever set up for someone? The most unique game. That is an interesting one. Hmm. The most unique game I've ever had to set up. Uh, I've had to help someone set up the League of Legends board game that uh, a lot of people come in. A lot of people who are unfamiliar with the library come in and they look at this wall of games and the first thing they see is the Titanic box that is like the League of Legends board game. And everyone immediately wants to set it up and it's a, it's a bit tricky, but, you know, uh, we power through it. I would say, like, not the setup is unique, but the game itself, Parappa the Rapper, great game. Um, uh, when we had uh, one of our NASs was acting up, and I set it up accidentally instead of the working one, and NES Tennis just didn't want to function, and it got all glitchy, that was an interesting fix. <laughs> Yeah, this is very interesting to hear about. I'm glad someone's gotten into that League of Legends game. I was sort of wondering. It's very daunting. Yeah, the box is basically the bi as big as me. Um, uh, all right, what, what do you think is the most essential piece of inventory in the library? And this could be your favorite or, or something you're glad we have that people can get, can, can get to play here. Right. So I think the most essential piece, in my opinion, that we have here is 100% uh, Forbidden Island because it is my favorite board game. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, Settlers of Catan, we've got like 10 copies of that. And we have 10 copies of Settlers of Catan for a reason. Very important game, very fun. It, like, we, we're like currently trying to uh, categorize every single game uh, like behind us. And Settlers of Catan is definitely like the one that we have to get, you know, try the, the hardest to get through. I found out today that we have Cooking Mama, and I was really happy about that. I also think the Wii, every Wii game we have is just amazing. Wii Sports Resort, for sure. Um, I'd have to go with Dominion. They, they now all are complete because we went through them all, and it's just like a key game that just applies to so many things. Yeah, I feel like, Monroe, every time I, you're working, I come in here and Wii Sports Resort is set up. So I can verify that is essential. Uh, the soundtrack, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, great. Um, and like you mentioned earlier, we do a ton of, uh, ton of events here. And you all also work our events. Uh, can you tell us about a favorite event you've worked on? And that could be in person from uh, the history of in-person events we've done, or it could be virtual from our, our, our uh, big foray into virtual events over the past year. Yeah, yeah so... Uh, the event that I've worked the most across my time working at the library is definitely uh, Playtest Thursday because you get so many different kinds of games that are in progress. And, y you know, you get uh, people who come in y uh, week after week to, you know, make changes to their game. And it's really fun to see, like, that, you know, that game or, like, that person, like, learn more about their own game and, like, building upon the things that they're, like, getting feedback from. And it's just... Uh, it's just like exciting to like see that work in progress. My freshman year, I got to work this event called No Quarter, which is when NYU commissions a bunch of like artists to make these really cool games and we show them off at No Quarter. Um, that was really fun. There were a lot of really cool people there, really cool things happening. Um, and it was nice to see what people outside of the NYU community were making. So yeah. Um, my favorite events that I worked were during COVID, we held a Discord channel uh, where we had like weekly small little podcasts where we got to talk about like our favorite games and dropping into several of those. Those were fun to host and be a part of. Yeah, we did some pretty cool stuff on the Discord. Um, that's something that anyone anyone on in watching the stream from anywhere can join. So the NYU Game Center Discord is open to the public. So if you're interested in checking out what's going on in there, um, we're not doing as much of the live streams anymore, but you can participate in Playtest Thursday, which which yours talked about. Cool. Um, well, now we're gonna do we're gonna do this or that. So we're gonna get your opinion. Oh, <laughs> 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 
<laughs> All right. Triple A or indie? Indie games. Playing indie games, getting paid for triple A games. <laughs> indie games. Paper prototype or digital prototype? Uh, before I would have said paper prototype, but now I re I'm really digging the digital prototype. Paper. Paper prototype as well. Playing cards or dice? Uh, this really depends, but mostly playing cards. Playing cards. Dice. Group project or solo project? Oh, goodness. Uh, the <laughs> thing that I know how to do the most is art and animation, and my coding could use some works of group projects. Literally everything he just said. <laughs> uh, group project, you get to see more people's skills. Nintendo Switch or PS5? And I know you all have sort of a unique relationship with the PS5. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, we keep getting asked week after week, when is the PS5 coming in? And we never have an answer to that. Uh, my friends have a PS5, uh, and it's, it's nice to look at, so definitely the PS5. I feel like absence makes the heart grow fonder, so I really want a PS5. <laughs> uh, Ghost of, Tsush of Tsushima on PS5 is amazing, but Metroid Dread is better, so Nintendo Switch. <laughs> Playing games or making games? Making games, making games is really hard. So <laughs> making, I, I mean, I do like making games because the, just like having it come together in the end is extremely satisfying. I feel like everyone who says making games is lying. <laughs> <laughs> making games because it's like a masochistic practice. <laughs> All right. All right, great. Intro to game design or games 101? Uh, intro to game design. Games 101. Intro to game design. Th those answers lined up with the making games or playing games answers. All right, NYC or LA? I'm from here, so NYC. 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 <laughs> Good. Yeah, correct answers. Nice. Detective Pikachu or Chris Pratt as Mario? Chris Pratt as Mario, undoubtedly. I have a Detective Pikachu poster in my room. <laughs> Chris Pratt is Mario because it's funny. <laughs> All right, esports or real sports? I got I got bullied for this earlier, but I'm <laughs> I'm still gonna go with esports because I believe in it. It's re, re, uh, esports is real sports, y'all. Yours does not know what a real sport is. <laughs> real sports for sure. <laughs> Real sports, 100% yours. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Thanks for coming on. Do you have any, any parting words for the stream? Uh, apply, to the, apply to the NYU Game Center. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, yours. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, well, yeah, thanks so much. Yeah, this is great. Great to hear about the library. All right. All right, we are, I think, right on schedule here. A little ahead of schedule. Maybe this is a good time then, coming off that, to talk about some upcoming events we have real quick. Um, if you're interested in some of the events that our librarians talked about at the NYU Game Center, we're live streaming our lecture series talk with Ethan Red next week. So indie game designer and co-creator of, uh, it's Neo Media, right? Mm, so. Yeah, is gonna be uh, giving a talk in the lecture series next week. It'll be live on Twitch at 7 p.m. And in November, on, on November 11th, we have the co-founders of Brass Lion also giving a lecture series talk on November 11th at 7 p.m. at twitch.tv backslash NYU Game Center. Mm -hmm. All right. Those are my event pitches. Okay. Great. Yeah. All right. I'm going to turn it over to you, Tony. All right. All right. Next up, we are bringing on a few of our MFA students. So these are both second year MFAs. Come on over. Uh, and we are going to talk to them a little bit about a project they're working on. Um, so, welcome to the stream. Thanks for being here today. Uh, all right, first, can you just each introduce yourselves? Let us know your name and uh, what, your, what project you're working on and what you're going to show today. Uh, my name is Ty Cobb. I'm talking about uh, Games in the Grass. 
Yeah, I'm Muchi, uh, spelled M-U-T or M-O-O-C-H-I, whatever you feel like it. Uh, I'm also talking about Games in the Grass. We work on this project together, yeah. All right, so Games in the Grass. This sounds great. Um, presumably these are outdoor games? Yes. All right, okay, give us the full pitch of these games. Um, yeah, yeah, it's pretty much, you know, what it says on the label. It's, uh, there's out, there are games played outside, all sorts of games. Uh, we're trying to put on, like, uh, fortnightly events, uh, usually in Prospect Park, sometimes in other parks, and bring, like, video games and sort of, uh, sort of trying to blur the boundaries between, like, video games and folk games and uh, physical games and sports and all, all sorts of games, just to provide people a place to, to play every couple weeks. Yeah, I think the the idea came through after like the year long pandemic, finally getting together. Like the moment we got here, we started like moving around and playing games and wanting to like use our bodies more. Like I immediately knew that at least I was gonna want to explore and play as many physical games that, that as I could in the next year, and that is kind of like what we were trying to do with those events. And also, like I am a video games person, so I'm also interested in how to bring those two together. Awesome, this sounds great. Um, I'm a huge like big games, public space games fan, so I'm like very stoked about this project. Uh, it has this, like big like come out and play vibes. If you've if you've ever like attended that festival, I think this this is like per lines perfectly with their like values and missions. Um, were you hoping to play one of the games on air? Oh yeah, we have a, we have a, 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 an idea. You don't have to, but if you'd like to try yeah, one we out. Can try, we can try, yeah. Uh, last year, uh, I think, yeah, last year there was, I think Eric Zimmerman was talking about uh, the, what's the name of the book? Infinite Playground. I was talking about this game called Zen Counting. Mm -hmm. And I thought about like, oh, this could work on the stream. And I, I started counting on the stream. So like, I don't know if you're all familiar with Zen counting, but the idea is to count up. So like each person will say a number and then, then another different person has to say the next number. But if it ever clashes or two people say the same number, you have to restart. And I think it works well with uh, like Twitch chat. So I'll send, yes, I am. Oh, I'm, you're in the chat. I'm so prepared. So like I started, and then someone else has to like say the next number. Oh, it's but sort of more fun on Twitch. I'm excited. Yeah, it's, it 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 yeah, it's excited, right? Uh, so yeah, uh, just someone has to say two, and All then right, three. Go. Oh, oh no! We and lost. we lost so fast, so fast. We're so bad at this. Someone has to start. All right, somebody's got to start the next round. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, okay, we're going we're doing it. No. Oh, oh, <laughs> wait, we took ourselves out. The NYU Game Center took ourselves out. Oh no. Did not like the fact that I sent the same message <laughs> three times. <laughs> oh, someone tried to be smart and send a four before the three even ahead. go. <laughs> yeah. It's so hard. Yeah, I I'll be excited like you can keep doing this forever. This is a great uh chat yeah, game in the chat, right? <laughs> stream. okay so this is an example of sort of like the kind of games we can expect to see yeah. do you have one specific game that you um that you've been working on that you want to tell people about or, or you can each share one I mean, uh, i'll just i'll share a game uh, that we've played i don't know that it's a game that we've uh, been working on one of the things like a lot of the games we play are folk games, uh, so they're not necessarily they're not necessarily things we make. Like we might read about them, or just discover them playing with people. This one is one that we just read about, which I think is very fun, and hope everybody uh, can play. But it's called uh, Dark Room, and the object of the game is, uh, or the point of the game is, you just, the way it's played is you all close your eyes, uh, you and a group of people, and imagine you're in a dark room together developing a photograph. Uh, and you're just trying to like kind of like see what's in your imagination. When you see something, you just say it. Uh, and so we might begin the game, and I'll close my eyes and say, "I see a rabbit." Um, and then as soon as you see something in your imagination, you just say it out loud. And we just do this until we decide that it's a nice enough picture, and we can move on to the next one. Uh, we played that. It was a really fun experience. I would uh, recommend trying it. 
Yeah. Uh, there's I forgot my forks. I could show that one. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Let's talk about that game. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Uh, the, this one. Uh, I had some spare, f uh, like plastic forks on my bag, and I I think I can describe it, and you might be able to play. If you ever have like spare uh, plastic forks, it's perfect that that you can perfectly fit a quarter uh, like between the forks uh, teeth. I don't know how you call those, uh, and. And then we decided to like f do fencing with that. So like you're trying to knock out the other person's fork with your fork without losing your own uh, quarter. It's pretty fun. Like if you have a fork and a quarter, even like just playing with that is fun in itself. But yeah, uh, yeah, th yeah. But imagine these are forks with quarters on the top, and we're. It, it's a very like simple and like gentle game, because you're like yeah. Oh, oh I see what you're doing. <laughs> too aggressive. All right, so I like uh, I love both these games. These sound great. Um, when are so you said you're gonna try to run these events uh, fortnightly? So um, are those come are any coming up in the next couple of weeks or months? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're having uh, one tomorrow. At uh, tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow Saturday in Fort Greene at 5:03 p.m. That's when we're starting, one hour before sundown, and then we'll have one again uh, next week. This one tomorrow is a makeup event, so then it'll be every two weeks starting next Saturday, but also tomorrow, but also tomorrow. <laughs> if that makes any sense at all. Yes. yes. All right, great. So that's gra games in the grass. Games in the grass. Games in the grass. I love it. By what? Pond life, great. Um, okay, so I wanna switch and talk a little bit about the Game Center in general. Um, what has been your favorite Game Center class so far? You wanna start? Okay, I'll start here. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll switch. Um, so far, my favorite Game Center class has been, I think, theater games. Yeah, uh, it's just like a, uh, it's taught by Emily Koontz and she just creates like a is I think working really hard to make like a very welcoming play environment for people to feel safe, uh, like doing improv, which is I think a scary thing for me, definitely, and I think for a lot of other people. Uh, and so it's been like a nice free environment to kind of explore those kinds of games. Yeah, uh, also love that class. And I think currently my favorite is Prototype Studio, which is a class where like it's one of the reasons I came here. I just wanted to make a games a week, small games, small experiments, and have like a community that would play them, engage with them every week, and be excited about them. And it's all, uh, also amazing to see like everyone else in that class also making their own games. How do we influence each other? How like one week someone makes a game about a kendo, and then the next week there's also a game about a kendo, oh. and like how like and like some little mechanic that someone else gets for the next week. It's pretty cool to see that. And just like very quickly iterating, it's fun. All right, thank you. All right, I believe it's time for this or that. All right. Okay, we're gonna do a quick this or that. All right, so I'm gonna, all right, this or that, you'll choose one of the options on the card. All right, triple A or indie. Yeah, me. Um, yeah, it, this is. I think this is the IndieCade stream, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. I. Yeah. I'd go like indie, like whatever is over here in this graph. Like the more of this side, the better. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just ta talked about Prototype Studio. I love digital prototypes. I respect paper prototypes a lot, but I don't know. There's something about digital for me yeah I think I really like uh, like physical prototypes just playing games with no no tools at all or tools that are like you know this piece of paper right here already or fork. Or fork. playing cards uh, dice <laughs> wow. I love group projects I Prototype is a solo class, but I feel like it's a big group thing, and just um, love working with different people. Very fun. Yeah, ditto. Grass. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, if I have to play by the rules, I'll I'll pick the switch. Good. Yeah. The Nintendo GameCube. <laughs> uh, making games, but also playing them. But playing the games I make and people make, like near me. Uh, yeah, games. <laughs> I really like both those classes, but I'm gonna say intro to game design. Yeah, I've never, I didn't take intro to game design, but I imagine it's very good, and I picked that one. Oh yeah, we took game design one, right? New York, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, New York, uh, city baby. <laughs> Mario. Just Mario. Just Mario. <laughs> uh, yeah, Charles Pratt as Charles Mario. Pratt. <laughs> that is a funny one, but I, I'll say real sports, but I'm very excited for, like, here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd say this is a fake question. Uh, Esports <laughs> e are real sports, no, but no. also real sports. Yeah. All right, that's it. That. Yeah. Yeah, that is it. That. All right, before we send you off, is there a place that people can follow your work or keep, um, get like added to a mailing list or anything about these game updates? Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of places. Uh, we have Games in the Grass on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. If you don't see any posts there, that's okay. Still follow us and wait for the first <laughs> post. Uh, and we also have a website, which is gamesinthegrass.github.io, and eventually we'll have a real domain too. Yeah, and also there's a great website I found the other day that you should all visit. It's dumpling.love. It's very interesting. I highly recommend. Great. Yeah, that's a good one. All right, awesome. Thanks so much for joining us today, and I'm looking forward to these games in the grass. Thank you. Yeah, I hope to see you there. Yeah, I'll definitely come so at some point. Yeah, come come play games. <laughs> All right. Next up, we may have to step outside of the library to grab them, uh, but we will be speaking with two of our faculty, including our department chair, Naomi Clark, um, and Maddie Bryce. Come on in. You can walk in front of, yeah, or, or, yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. the library is a huge room, so they're running through all of the computers. They're here. Hi. Welcome. Hi. Hello. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, our pleasure. Hi, Andy Kane. Hi, Andy Kane. Um, I'm gonna actually go to that side. So all right. All right. Uh, well, first off, uh, can you all just introduce yourselves? Sure, I'm Naomi Clark, uh, and I'm a professor here at the Game Center, and I'm also the chair of the department, which means I'm nominally, <laughs> <laughs> they do that, yeah, yeah, sort of like quote in charge, big, big quote. Yeah. Hi, I'm Maddie, and I also am a professor here at Game Center, I would just, I'm newer within the past year, so I'm the opposite. <laughs> We're opposites, yeah. All right. Um, I don't remember our questions that we wrote down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, okay. We're so we're starting with a very fun question. Okay. All right. You both teach many classes here, mm -hmm. but what is your dream class? That if you could teach any class, what would your dream class be? I go first? Yeah, okay. Go first. Oh, I have to say. Yeah, Let's to see. My, if I had to do a dream class, I would like to kind of like take over like a public space in New York City and design games for it, especially kind of like talking about like uh, cultural issues and I issues of like New York City because like we're a very vibrant and public place here in New York City. And so if I had to teach a class, I'd be like, Let's like take over a public space and design it specifically for that public space, like to like the neighborhood, the environment, the architecture, things like that. So that would be my favorite class or dream class. Which, which do you have a specific public space? Uh, there's so many public places to think about. <laughs> oh, I, there's so many public spaces here in New York City. Um, 
I don't I, I'll have to think about it but I will say that like something that would be kind of interesting that is a hot topic issue here is the subway and I just feel like games for the subway that are a little bit subversive would be kind of cool so like I guess that would be my preliminary answer I did a game jam on a subway once you did a game jam on yeah a somebody a few years ago ran a subway game jam we rode the seven train and made games awesome. all the way there and then played them all the way back <laughs> so cool. yeah it was very so fun all right Naomi what is your dream class uh, I've been having a dream about a class recently. It's uh, <laughs> the class is called Metaverse Terrorism: no. <laughs> How to Destroy the Metaverse. Uh, and this in this class, we look at we would look at the history of disruptions to various kinds of metaverses, like back when a bunch of people started making brutalist architecture in Second Life and dominated the landscape with gigantic brutalist architecture, um, or you know, all the way back to like early disruptions of muds and things like that. But then the second half of the class is you have to design games for modern metaverses like okay. Fortnite, Roblox, whatever Facebook is changing its name to next week. And you have to, dis you have to try and blow up stuff in those metaverses by making games that will get people excited and cause just chaos and rampage. Okay, I like yeah, this game. yeah. I like this class now. That's my class idea. Do you, do you think one day the game center will exist in the metaverse? Um, no, not as long as I'm chair. That uh, yeah, we will rent. A, we'll have a booth in the metaverse, but it'll be like a giant black void that when you. Step into it, you're disconnected. <laughs> yeah, and that's how we'll advertise. <laughs> Perfect. I'm here for it. <laughs> Perfect. Um, all right. <laughs> We're going to pass our question back yeah. Okay, here's a tough question. Is the Game Center currently hiring? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yes, Quinnan. Thank you for mentioning. <laughs> We are hiring. We're looking to expand our faculty. So if, if you're somebody who has, uh, has been making games uh, and is interested in working with students, teaching students, helping to guide student projects, um, even if you don't have any experience teaching, but even better if you do, uh, you should get in touch with us or look on our website. There's a, a job wanted ad. You could become a professor. You don't have to be, you don't even have to have a degree. I don't, I like barely have a bachelor's degree and I'm in charge of this place. Come and hang out with us. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, thank you. Um, all right, I have a, on a similar, uh, similar note, if there's probably people watching the stream wondering who should apply to come to the NYU Game Center, what sort of students are we looking to to apply to the program? Oh, I know Maddie has opinions about this. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, cool. So I feel like, um, one, you should want to come to New York City itself because we're not just an isolated program in a building. We're a part of the community in New York City. Um, one, we want p uh, students who are super interested in engaging with culture, like games and culture. So not only like bringing games uh, or bringing culture into games and influences from other things, but also for kind of applying games to other spaces. So we're all about experimentation here, I would say, at, at Game Center. Like we really like um, trying out new things, failing and learning to succeed through failing. So we would want people who want a safe space to explore and experiment, particularly with kind of like cool, unthought of things. So that's the kind of student I think we want. Yeah, if you're, if you're somebody who wants to make games and you're like, should I make that game? Would even anyone even like it? Then yeah, come here. Yeah, we are your friends. Excellent. <laughs> All right, I know I remember this question. This is a question I was like, hmm, I'm interested in this. Uh -oh. All right, these you, you you selected these questions by the way. All right, what is the hottest goss at the NYU Game Center? <laughs> what is the hot the hottest goss at the NYU Game Center? Oh, I'm the wrong person to ask this because I'm 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 privy to too much cold, disturbing goss. Um, I would say that the uh, that despite the pandemic, we the the game center has started to take over the out, an outer face of the building, and we're spreading up and down. Um, we and have created what I think is now being called a patio on the outside of the building and that not everybody 
not every other department at NYU <laughs> is necessarily in favor of this. So it's a little bit controversial. <laughs> what do you think is the hot goss, Maddie? Oh my gosh. Um, gosh, there's just so much hot goss that I'm like having a hard time choosing. Yeah, I'm just like trying to figure out the best one. Well, um, I would say that one hot goss is that uh, maybe unlike a lot of us here in New York City and other places of the world that we don't get to gather very often, we have a weekly gathering at uh, on Thursdays where we play test games and hang out in a very social way. But I feel like not enough people know that. So I think that's a hot goss that I'm going to contribute. Well, yeah, yeah, I want to add to that because I, I thought of you yesterday. I was at Play Test Thursday and there is a game, a big board game all about Florida. Yes. Being, being run by and he the the person running it is where it, like where's a flag of florida oh my God. and uh <laughs> it's all about trying to pass laws in florida to improve things but without reducing the floridaness oh, <laughs> yeah okay so that's the kind of hot goss we like to pass around now the last piece of hot goss for uh, for all of you out there, you know who you are um the twine is the most controversial game. And not No, wait, not twine. What am I saying? I just screwed up. Inform 7 <laughs> is the most controversial game engine uh -oh. at the game center this semester. Drama. Yeah, you heard it here first. Twine, <laughs> everyone loves twine. Inform, oh my gosh. That's like a, yeah, love it or hate it. Yeah. Twine is a cow. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that was great. That was some, some piping hot goss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, if you are an, an NYU Game Center student and you want some snacks today, we have snacks on the controversial patio. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but we're gonna we're gonna play some this or that. Okay. So we have two things. You should say which one you like the best. Cool. Can we just yeah. Yell it out? Yeah. Just yell it out. Or we'll take the microphone. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Real sports. Definitely real sports. Thank you. <laughs> Indy. Oh, yeah, Indy. I wanted to be contrarian. I, I, I wanted to come up with a reason to say AAA, and I just can't. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, okay. I'm going to go controversial here. Uh, digital prototype. Honestly, because not everything can be paper prototyped. People, sometimes people claim that they can, but uh, it's hard. I'm actually going to say paper prototype only because not enough people at least try it first. So yeah. it's uh, underrated if you ask me. Good point. <laughs> oh, playing cards. Wait. Oh, yeah, playing cards. <laughs> That's the correct answer. <laughs> Dice are terrible. <laughs> it's definitely playing cards. 1,000% group project. 1,000% solo project. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I don't even know if the PS5 exists. I haven't even seen one. So I'll say <laughs> Nintendo Switch. <laughs> yeah, that's like asking, is a unicorn better than a horse? I mean, I guess in theory it is. I, I'm also going to go with the Switch. It's adorable. Ooh. Mm. Destroying games. <laughs> I will I'll play fair and I'll say making games because I feel like um, I get a lot more interest out of making games these days. I'm kind of like bored of playing most games now. So like I feel like I feel like I like making them better. <laughs> oh, I've taught both of these. Well, I mean, like I teach one of these classes, so I have to do Games 101. <laughs> OK, yeah, I mean. Oh, I think I also have to support our new Games 101 because, uh, yeah, they're both amazing classes, introductory classes, but Games 101 just got a fascinating overhaul. That we, It's a new experiment, so I'm going to root for it. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, I was born in L.A., but I'm... I moved here, so NYC for me. Uh, despite all of my friends who are out there in LA, NYC for yeah. sure. <laughs> That's also a yeah, that was. You just, this is antagonism. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Uh, oh my God! I don't know. Uh, wait, which one I like better? Oh God! Uh, Chris Pratt as Mario. Oh wow! I'm gonna have to go go for Detective no, Pikachu. So yeah. <laughs> I, hey, it's not. Have you seen it? It's not as bad as you think. All right. Thank you. We made it. We did it. We, wow, that was an arduous gauntlet. Wow. Yeah. 
Uh, well, thanks so much. All right, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Bye, everybody. Uh, and I think I think that's it for the NYU Game Center Live at Indicate. Thanks for joining us. Uh, if you're in the chat, shout out uh, NYU Game Center, number one game design program in the chat for us. Um, no, number one. Any, anything else, Tony? Uh, no, I think uh, I would say uh, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, NYU Game Center, um, or check out our website to get on our mailing list so you can hear about all these great events happening, attend our lecture series, um, stream them on Twitch, and sort of stay in the loop with games in New York City. Uh, yeah, I think that wraps it up. That was pretty great. Yeah, thanks all right. so much. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye from the NYU Game Center.